Yesterday we started doing a Hanukkah, but we have to move along because Sunday night's already Hanukkah. Everybody's obligated to light Hanukkah candles. Men, women, children uh, of the age of education, they all have to light Hanukkah candles. The custom is women do not light their own Hanukkah candles. The only ones that light Hanukkah candles are the men. The women have to hear from a man, or if they live alone, then they do have to light their own Hanukkah menorah. Now, many people have a custom, they put the menorah in the window. Why did they put it in the window? Because then everybody in the street could see it. Chabad, the custom is not to put it in the mirror, in the, in the window, but we put it in a doorway opposite the mezuzah. If the mezuzah is, let's say, on the right side where it's supposed to be, you put the menorah on a chair, a little stool. Uh, now, the height of the menorah is supposed to be between three tvachim and ten tvachim which in inches is approximately uh, nine inches, 10 inches, to uh, 10 would be 35 inches. That means the flame, not the menorah itself. If you have that tzachat chila, even if it's higher, up to, tw- up to 30 feet high from the floor, it's good. Tzachat chila, the best t- place of putting it is in a doorway opposite the mezuzah between Three tvachim and ten tvachim, which is figure, let's say, nine into ten inches uh, and um, 30 inches. That's the best. But that means not the menorah, but it means the flame. So if you have a tall menorah and you want to keep it that measurement, you can't put it on a high chair or a table because then it's going to be higher than the uh, amount of ten tvachim. Uh, what's interesting about Hanukkah is that. Hanukkah is basically one of the few mitzvahs, probably the only mitzvah, which is rabbinic, by the way, that we all do what's called mahadrin mina mahadrin, the best of the best. Meaning, the Gemara says like this, halachically, how do you fulfill the mitzvah of lighting Hanukkah candles? One candle per household per night. Which means, if you have five people in the house, the first night you light one candle, second night one candle, third night one candle, eighth night one candle. For the whole house, one candle for everybody. And one candle per night. Mahadrin means, the Gemara says, if you want to do it even better, then every person lights one candle per night. If you have five people in the house, so each one of the five lights one candle the first night, one candle the second night, one candle the seventh night, one candle the eighth night. Mahadrin, mina mahadrin, best of the best, is interesting, it's argument between Rambam and Teisvis. Here, the Sephardim do like Teisvis and the Ashkenazim do like Rambam which is usually the opposite, because Rambam was a Sephardi, and Taisir was, uh, was an Ashkenazic Jew. And nevertheless, this would be switch. The Ashkenazim do like the Rambam, and the Sephardi do like the, the Taisir. But the, the way our custom is, the first night we light one, everybody, all the male light one candle the first night, uh, each one has their own menorah, to the second night, three, the third night, four, the eighth, the, the eighth night. So everybody keeps adding a candle, and everybody in the house lights. Now, what happens if a person in a situation, by the way, <clears throat> that they only have one candle, that's all they have. So, logically, you light it and you make a bracha because that's the mitzvah of Hanukkah. Now, preferred, preferably, is the oil, the menorah should be oil menorah. Instead of lighting candles, preferably in Allah, it says the best thing is to use olive oil. But for the shamis, which means the one that lights all the others, then our custom is to use beeswax candles. But logically, you can use candles. You can, the best thing is olive oil and um, beeswax shamosim, as it's called. Um, now, another interesting din, because nowadays you see when you go to the Judaica stores, you see a lot of modern art men- menorah. You know, some of them are circular, some of them are multi-level. It might look good, but you're not, it's not, you're not fulfilling your obligation. The lights of the menorah have to be in a straight line, all in the straight line, not in, in a curve or not in a circle, a semicircle. It has to be in a straight line, and it can be rounded, and uh, you can't make one go in, one go up, one higher, one lower. All this is not good. And you also have to, have to make sure when you light them, there's a separation between two candles because otherwise they'll catch together and you'll have one major uh, fire that's no good because you need each one to have a separate fire. Ideally, it says in Aloha, we like to beautify mitzvahs. 
So the beautification of the menaira is it should be silver, if possible. But again, uh, yeshiva bachrim. Years ago, yeshiva boy. Now they have a lot of money. I don't know from where. But in our days, yeshiva bachrim had no money. So a lot of guys, how did they? What did they do for menaira and Hanukkah? They couldn't afford the menaira. They take bottle. bottle caps. Then were the metal bottle caps, the metal bottle caps, and they would take eight of them, get, and they would fill them up with oil. And the first night, one, two, and then they made their own wicks out of cotton, you know, like this. And then they would light it, and that's the way they, and it burnt enough time. It was a, you know, decent sized cap, because the minimal time that the menorah has to light is a half an hour after nightfall. So if you light it, let's say, uh, 20 minutes after nightfall, it has to burn a half an hour. Our custom is 50 minutes. But logically, if it burns a half an hour after nightfall, but if you lit it before nightfall, let's say you lit it 20 minutes before nightfall, then it has to burn 20 minutes plus a half an hour. That's why Shabbos, when you light Hanukkah candles on Shabbos, you have to light before candle lighting, which is 20 minutes before sundown, which is a half an hour before uh, nightfall. So you have 20 minutes plus a half an hour plus another half an hour. So it has to burn Friday night candles. have to burn at least an hour and 20 minutes. At least. Now the regular Hanukkah candles that you buy in the boxes, those don't burn. They burn barely a half an hour. So you can't use those. What people do if they're lighting candles, they'll use Shabbos candles or tea lights. You know, they have these tea lights. They burn for hours. So then you light them. You put them in your menorah, you know, and then you light them and then they burn the proper amount of time. But if you're going to do it for a smaller amount of time, then you're not actually fulfilling your obligation. One more din and then we'll go to Avimayev. And that is the oil that's left over in the menorah or the wicks are forbidden to benefit from. You can use it for another night of Hanukkah. Let's say the first night they didn't burn all the way down, so you can use that oil plus. But after Hanukkah, all the oil left over in the menorah and all the wicks, you have to burn in a separate fire. Unless, unless, if you make a condition before you light the menorah, that all the wick, uh, leftover oil and wicks that I'm going to have left over, I can throw out. If you make a condition, then after, Yom, after Hanukkah, you can throw it out. If you didn't make that condition... Are you allowed to throw the, the old ones? Huh? No, you say you can use them again. If you want to use them again, you mean? No, you will. No, I'm saying if there's leftover oil, that left unless you make a condition before. The glass itself you can throw out, the plastic, whatever you can throw out. I'm saying so the oil and the wick over? has to be burnt separately after Hanukkah, unless if you make a condition before you light it, that whatever is left over, I'm going to be able to uh, get rid of.